Hey guys, what's up? It's me, MC Matador here, and today I'm bringing you another original countdown, also to say. Um, I want to talk about just. I had an idea that I want to talk about five ride models that I found in particular are trending towards mass removal. Um, well, before I go into a bit of context, I want to say first and foremost, this is currently being pre recorded for this because I got spring break. Uh, I got my spring break after this week at university, and I'll be on a long bus ride back to my house but i'm trying to get into consistent uploading schedule for every friday afternoon or evening the time i upload may not be consistent but i want to try and upload every friday afternoon or evening at the very least um i mean this sometimes it's hard putting out the same video i type twice in a row if i put up two reviews i'm not gonna be proud of myself but i just uh i've been trying to experiment for the past couple weeks now with the new release video every Friday type of thing. And it's it's been going pretty well. It gives me enough time to just give me enough motivation to think of a video, prepare it, um, get enough resources, just ha find enough time, especially since this semester my Fridays are pretty generous. Uh, of course, now that that's, I want, I finished talking about that, we're gonna try, we'll see how long this thing lasts. But for the real content, I wanna try my hand in more defunct attractions over the past five or ten years I've noticed that some types of ride removal or some types of rides are leaving at a greater frequency than others and I want to cover five models that fit in the category uh, I mean they'll be in relative order from most prevalent to least prevalent uh, it's gonna be exploration and more fact-based rather than opinion based so it's a little off this off content like I usually upload stuff that is opinion based or review based or like head-to-head -head based more so than just counting down things that have actually happened. And even if it does, I usually allocate with a future rumor, but that's not happening today, or at least that's not the main focus. Uh, I really, really enjoy the removal trends in the amusement, the amusement industry. I know it sucks that rides are going, but sometimes taking out an old, decrepit, unpopular ride is the best thing a park can do. And the the, the land that is open from these parks, I love the topic of land management. Um, by the way, it, the land that these things can open can be a huge indicator for what a park may consider replacing said attraction with, if at all. If you couldn't tell already, it's also, just for those who don't know what max, mass exodus means, just I'm not going to assume people know what that means. It's when a large group of people or things leave all at once or within a short time frame. Um, exodus, as I know, sometimes is a word that isn't doesn't get used a whole lot and i also will cover for each of these things some major removals for the certain ride type from and i'm gonna also have a huge swing towards american parks or north america as a whole like north america and canada because i'm not an expert i've never been outside of north america so i don't know much about japanese parks chinese parks european parks or anywhere else for the matter but i want to talk about a lot of the prevalent removals things uh, for number five though i'm gonna make a special exception which is the arrow looper this is less of a widespread movement and more of a timely trend the demolition of king's island's ma major mega looper from arrow vortex recently completed like the, the it's now just a big plot of dirt all the metals and shrapnel and just everything's gone it's officially gone from vortex it's it, this could be the fuel that sparks a major movement in the amusement industry. Arrow attractions were very popular in the seven in the mid seventies or from the mid seventies to about the nineties to about the early nineties. Arrow was the staple manufacturer. They went out of business in two thousand two. Although Vacoma with their Dutch counterpart sort of thing, it's a complex history there still sometimes supplies parts as well as third-party manufacturers, but a lot of their rides, especially Vortex, since I had actually been to Kings Island twice uh, when Vortex was still around to ride it and experience the ambiance with it, it was a rough and unpopular ride until its demise was made public and people seemingly pretended to love it. Like, it's not unusual that when a ride is announced to be bulldozed that ridership spikes as people want to get their last rides on something. But just claiming that you always loved a certain attraction, despite never really filling in a very empty queue, 
uh, more than say once a year. Like there's some things I'll admit I was like I'd rather I don't like them and I don't want both and I would not mind seeing going and Vortex is one of those. Yes, I understand its historical significance in the amusement market and history being the first ever coaster to go upside down six times, but Vortex uh, was very unpopular, outdated, failed in comparison, can easily is highly expendable in the lineup of Kings Island. Especially since they could open up a pristine real estate plot that can help them expand further into the woods for a massive expansion. Um, so, I see a trend in the future with a lot of parks, especially in the Cedar Fair chain, removing older, decrepit arrows and possibly even Vacomas, but Vacoma is at least still around and they actively supply their parts for their older rides. Some possible future casualties being along the lines of King's Dominion's Anaconda, Cedar Point's Corkscrew, Dragonfire at Canada's Wonderland, Demon at California Great America, Carolina Cyclone at Carowinds, and some Six Flags parks, especially the larger ones, may hop in on this, such as Viper at Six Flags Magic Mountain, Demon at Six Flags Great America, and Ninja at Six Flags St. Louis, even though that's like a half arrow, half Vacoma hybrid. Vortex's demise is not a continuation, but this could start a major trend throughout the throughout the 2020s and beyond. And I I want to warn enthusiasts now that these things might start falling like flies. Now, this is kind of just more of a prelude. I wanted to have a special mention for this since I'm talking about defunct coasters. We're going to go to something that actually has been like nearly eradicated over the course of the t um the 2010s over the last 5 years, which is the stand-up coaster. Some key removals have been Mantis to Cedar Point, converted to Rougarou, a B&M Flawless Coaster, Shockwave at King's Dominion, and Skyrider at Canada's Wonderland, which were both Togo stand-ups that were both demolished, and similar, if not identical, B&M uh, stand-ups from the early 90s, Apocalypse, formerly Iron Wolf at Six Flags America, and Vortex at California's Great America were both converted to stand sit-downs as well. So five removals over the course of the 2010s, all coming from like 2014 or later, and it, it's basically time for the stand-up coaster to meet the Reaper. There's very few surviving installations in America. Vortex at Carowinds, which could go any year now. Georgia Scorcher at Six Flags Over Georgia. And Riddler, the king of them all, Riddler Revenge at, at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Oh, and uh, Green Lantern at Six Flags uh, Great Adventure as well. That's another stand-up coaster that still exists. I forgot that one existed for a sec, but... Um, those are basically, two of those are still highly expendable. Five removals or conversions in the 2010s in North America alone, with not too many stand-up coasters existing outside of America. The one, the one I can think of predominantly is Shockwave at Drayton Manor, which is the only remaining Intamin stand-up coaster. Uh, this coaster was very popular in the 90s, and only the 90s. B&M's first ever coaster, Iron Wolf, formerly at Six Flags Great America, then Apocalypse and Firebird, was B&M's first ever coaster, and they entered the market on the stand-up trend, and continue to make stand-ups. Uh, their last stand-up that they built was 1999, which is the currently operating Six Georgia Scorcher at Six Flags Over Georgia. There's no reason to believe that Carowinds wants to keep Vortex in its current state, and since Six Flags already turned Apocalypse into a sit-down coaster, there could be something out of left field one day where uh, Georgia Scorcher uh, will be converted into a sit-down as well. Even though I personally think there's nothing wrong with Georgia Scorcher the way it is. This draws to the expansion idea that is B&M stand-ups. B&M stand-ups, which are the only stand-up coasters existing left in America, can easily be modified through B&M, uh, which has offices in the Central America, or Central United, Midwestern United States, Ohio specifically, to just basically have a gimpy year where you could just strip them of the stand-up trains, give it a new name, a new some new trains, the floorless, floorless or sit-down trains, and possibly a new paint job, and there you go, you have a new attraction for the calendar year. And it's parks who have stand-up coasters can easily benefit from such a thing. However, for Togo stand-ups, you couldn't really save them. They were awful, and they are now extinct in the Western world. Uh... The two of them that operated were Skyrider at King's Dominion, which is now operating in Italy, if I remember correctly. And uh, King's Dominion, or sorry, yeah, Skyrider at King uh, Canada's Wonderland, which is now operating in Italy. And King's Dominion Shockwave, which you can tell in the photo on the bottom left, was scrapped. So the Togo stand-up went extinct in America. There is only one Togo left in America, which is an unrelated manner. 
both of which were replaced by significantly better additions. King's Dominion used half the land for a Mondial giant frisbee in Delirium, and Canada's Wonderland expanded further around the Vortex Mountain, or uh, Can Wonder Mountain, with Yukon Striker, their massive B&M dive coaster. Now we're going to move away from the coaster types. I do want to focus on some flat rides that have been rapidly disappearing over the past uh, several years. Uh, I want to talk about one that's, that might be going only chain-wise, because it's still a very popular ride outside of the major chains, which is the Intamin or Hopkins Shoot the Shoots. Some major removals included some of their larger models that failed, such as Giraffica at Holiday World or Hydro at, um, I believe it's... Oakton's Park, or uh, that one, uh, I think Oakton's Park in the UK, as well as several major parks getting rid of theirs that are either standing but not operating, demolished or, or replaced, or demolished and not replaced, such as Six Flags Over Georgia, Six Flags Over Texas, Six Flags St. Louis, Six Flags Fiesta Texas, and Carowinds. A few Six Flags parks even got rid of their uh, Shoot the Shoots ride before the 2010 decades, mainly Six Flags Great America and Six Flags Great Adventure, getting rid of theirs right around 2008 each. Uh, there's also a few surviving installations that could be in some serious danger, mainly Six Flags Magic Mountain. Six Flags Magic Mountain's uh, Shoot the Shoots is expected to bite the dust by the end of the 2020 season. And a few others that might be in danger, basically the remaining Six Flags ones, Six Flags America has Shipwreck Falls, which is sitting on a prime plot of land in the middle of, uh, in like the midsection of the park in the midway. Six Flags Discovery Kingdom has one left, and considering how ex aggressive they are being with expansion, they could easily knock it down for something like, well I'll mention that later. And Hershey Park has one located right next to the water park. They can easily bulldoze it for a modern water slide instead of relying on a communal boat ride which I think the public prefers, general water slides. These these can be complicated to track down because there were three major manufacturers of these. I think Arrow made them once upon a time, but mainly Intamin and Hopkins have made these. Uh, Six Flags especially uh, has been ruthless with removing these because Over Georgia, Over Texas, St. Louis, and Fiesta Texas have all gotten rid of theirs since 2017. Uh, Six Flags Magic Mountains, like I said, is expected to go at the at, by the end of the 2020 season. These rides were very popular in the late 80s through the 90s, and still can be built today, uh, main, like some very popular in certain parks. The surviving installations, the most famous one being like the Jurassic World ride, or Jurassic Park rides at the Universal Parks, um, or some smaller parks like Kentucky Kingdom has Mile High Falls, or my one of my local tourist destinations, Noah's Ark, has one in the back of the park by their Raja um, Cobra Slide. Uh, and I'm sure tons of other small parks have them remaining, and those small parks will be more adept at keeping them around. Uh, but for the larger parks, I can see these going at any point. They have since uh, become unpopular rides that require extensive maintenance, and have failed to hold up to the popularity that it competes with with Log Flumes and River Rapids rides. Um, they also coincidentally, especially for mid-sized parks, and Six Flags especially, has the pretty much the exact footprint requirements upon removal for a Wonder Woman RMC Raptor clone, or a more popular choice, which is what's going to six, or a more recent choice, which is going to Six Flags Over Texas, a Mock Rides Power Splash, which uh, which is reminiscent of the Aquaman uh, um, water coaster going to Six Flags Over Texas for 2020. In their prime, there were probably at least 30, pop, more like, likely over 50 of these, out with more outside of the U.S., mainly in Europe and Japan, where a lot of the market exists. Uh, expect more of these to be removed uh, in the future. Certain parks have even not replaced these yet. Six Flags Over Georgia's has been standing but not operating since about the 2018 season, and it's not been replaced by anything yet. Holiday World's Giraffica, which has been gone since probably like 2014, has been has just a vacant plot of land, and Six Flags St. Louis just got rid of theirs at the end of the 2019 season, so it will be likely filled in by the 2021 attraction, whatever that is. I hope for an RMC Raptor. Also, if you haven't, go check out my Imagine Yourself as the Boss for Six Flags St. Louis edition, because I can. It's a pretty good video, and I think it did well recently. So give it a click. I'm not going to leave a annotation because I don't know how. But move on. 
Uh, number two is the Enterprise. Some major removals at major American parks have included my home park, Six Flags Great America, which is the picture on the bottom left, Kentucky Kingdom, Six Flags St. Louis, Valley Fair, Canada's Borderland, Cedar Point, and more, with, su with surviving installations at some smaller parks, uh, Dorney Park, California's Great America, Worlds of Fun, Kennywood, Carowinds, Six Flags Darien Lake, and Lagoon. So, yeah. There's a lot of these gone, but a lot of these still left. These were manufactured by both Huss and Schwarzkopf, which they were popular in the mid to late 70s and into the 80s, but both companies have ceased production of any sort of flat ride. So parts have been hard to come across for these types of attractions with no operating manufacturer. And because these types of rides, especially with maintenance costs these high, are considered expendable, Parks, a large majority of the parks, have decided that removing them would be best instead of sinking more money into upkeep and maintenance. And I would expect this trend to consider or to continue into the 2020s, especially at larger parks or, or rapidly modernizing parks. These also have a downfall with they have a substitution. There is a more modern version of the Enterprise called the Zamperla Endeavor. It's essentially the same concept, except that instead of using caged gondolas, you're in a you're in an inverted position, inverted chair. Or if you decide not to buy an Enterprise, you can easily replace this with any medium-sized flat ride. Or in the case of Great America, you can relocate a flat ride in a prime plot of land uh, to the location of your Enterprise to build something larger, which is how we got Joker. Yeah, picture on the bottom right is current is of Carowinds currently operating Enterprise Screamweaver. So this thing, I really actually enjoy these things. I really enjoy these uh these Enterprise models. I loved riding Orbit when I was at Great America. I loved it. Um, <laughs> it pulled a lot of positive G's, it pulled some good, uh, the loops were very forceful, or just the inversions as a whole. Just the amount of speed and centri centripetal force you get for riding these things is impressive. I've been on an Endeavor, because Kentucky Kingdom replaced their um, Enterprise with a Zamperla Endeavor, which I really enjoyed actually. I really enjoyed their, well, I think it's called Extreme, uh, Ex Scream Extreme or whatever. And I really enjoyed it. And I would love to see a sort one to come to Great America eventually, just replacing some other decrepit aging flat ride. And speaking of decrepit aging flat, flat rides, I want to talk about one ride in particular that I noticed has gone nearly extinct in the United States since about 2014 15, which is the Top Spin. This thing has been removed at or standing but not operating at countless parks. Six Flags Great America, Six Flags Fiesta Texas, Six Flags Darien Lake, King's Dominion, Valley Fair, Knott's Berry Farm, California's Great America, Dorney Park, Worlds of Fun, the currently oper standing but not operating one at Discovery Kingdom, and just to throw Europeans out there a bone, Alton Towers have all gotten rid of their topspins. The, the major thing is that all, most all of these have been Huss topspins as well. The few, there are some surviving installations left in America though. The only are North America and, of course, in Europe. Asia, and some traveling fairs even have these. But the major surviving, the only surviving Huss top spin in America is Twister at Six Flags Great Adventure. Riptide at California's, uh, or, sorry, Canada's Wonderland and Demon, Demon at La Ronde, and Cliffhanger at Lagoon are Mondial top spins. And Six Flags Mexico has a Vacoma top spin named Hodakan. This, I knew that as soon as I was going to choose this video for my next one, this had to be number one. There is only one surviving Huss topspin in Six Flags, or, or in North America. They have been removed en masse as their popularity has declined and maintenance costs increased, especially as Husses went out of business in the mid-2000s. These were first distributed in Europe in the early 90s and were very popular in North America in the late 90s and early 2000s, through about, say, 2005. It's sort of funny that they're nearly extinct after only 20 years. A couple of the manufacturers, mainly the Mondial and Vacoma ones I mentioned earlier, have put their hands into this, but I want to mention a couple that didn't quite make the bill for a top spin because they're like miniature models. Moser Rides makes one called the Maverick, which they have two currently operating in America, currently at Adventureland in Iowa and Lake Winnipesaukee in Northern Georgia. 
The top spin I have personally experienced many times, especially since King Chaos at my home park when it operated, used to run a very aggressive uh, ride program during Fright Fest, which was always, it wasn't fun, so to say, I didn't like it, but it was definitely, it definitely had to be experienced. I also did get one last ride in it when it was announced to be closing at the end of the 2017 season to be replaced by a giant super loop, which honestly is an improvement, but I still don't ride it. These things have been replaced by various things. Great America obviously got the Super Loop. BS Texas replaced theirs with a giant or giant a Giga Discovery. Darien Lake with a Skyflyer. Kings Dominion just got rid of theirs this past off season, so nothing yet. But it could be for a small ride or even a small coaster. Knott's Berry Farm got rid of their Boomerang and this for uh, their Gerslauer Affinity Coaster Hang Time. Valley Fair got rid of theirs for a Sky Screamer and so on. I'm not an expert on what all these got replaced by, but these things take up a rectangular plot of land, especially depending on how your queue is. It can be replaced by dang near anything, anything medium to large size, or even a small coaster if you do a double whammy or have some open space in the back. Um, I really, I don't miss these things to be honest. I know some people like them, but at Great America, I, I just a little memory. I remember when I was making, back in 2016, the fall of 2016, when my channel was first, or basically just hitting one year of consistent operation, I made a video detailing the removal of Orbit and Justice Wild Ride from Great America so that they can relocate East River Crawler to become the Lobster in Orbit's plot and build the Joker. I remember I also talked about in that video how 10 rides were in danger to be removed from Six Wives Great America over the course of that time. I've been correct on two of them and a third one by technicality and literally i was for my last entry when i was going around the park i was stuck between uh top uh king chaos and rue ladage and i eventually chose king chaos lo and behold king chaos was an axe at the end of the next season which i wasn't expecting it to be that soon but i understood why it was constantly down. It didn't often open until the early summer. Like it easily stood, it easily wasn't operating for a, th a quarter of the season at the very least. It never really had that much of a line. So it was just dead weight and a huge mechanical burden in the park. So I completely understand Great America for getting rid of theirs as well as pretty much the Six Flags Park nearly putting this thing in extinction. So many of these things have gone and I fully expect, uh, <laughs> some others to go soon. I mean, maybe Six Lives Mexico would remove Huracan. Huracan? Uh, Great Adventure can easily get rid of Twister. It's the only op la it's the last one of its kind, though, so maybe they'll keep it around for sentimental value. Now nah, they're expanding aggressively, so we'll see. Anywho, I'll wrap up this video. You probably won't... I recorded this on Sunday, the first the first day of March, uh, but I'm probably not gonna... This won't be uploaded until probably Thursday... Uh, the, the 5th or maybe Friday the 6th in the morning because you know like I said I have after this week at university I have my spring break and that's gonna be just a week off and since I'm gonna be on a long bus ride back to my hometown on the, the, the Friday I'm supposed to be uploading it's during the afternoon at that I'm uploading this I'm pre-recording and putting this up early so just if it seems a little rushed, that's why. I easily could have recorded this later, but I didn't want to forget. Now I just gotta remember to upload this when it's there. But, I mean, if you guys also have any more, um, any more attractions that are leaving at a fantastic pace, go ahead and say them as well. Some of the other things I was considering would be in, like the log flume, or maybe the, uh, <laughs> like the log flume was probably in consideration, uh, but it wasn't leaving at a fast enough rate. Uh, some other rides would be in consideration if you have one that you think I missed or if you want to try and swap out with another one or want to talk about omens of current of future trends in the comments go right ahead I'm open to discussion and I would love to talk about the, how amusement parks are going to evolve over the 2020s so okay if that's going to be it if you guys have enjoyed the video feel free to leave a like comment or subscription if you, uh, I hope you guys have a great instant unit of time here um, for those who have midterms coming up during my spring break, best of luck on those. I, now that I'm in university, I feel obligated to wish any fellow university students what to best of luck what they're going through, because I feel your pain. It, midterms ain't fun. And as always, I wish you guys peace.